Rodney Anderson has torn his ACL, and all that's coming up after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, the news is Rodney Anderson tore his ACL in a Thursday night preseason game. And he is likely done for the season. Probably means he ends up getting cut by the Cincinnati Bengals. He was already in a fierce competition with Travian Williams, another running back that they took in the sixth round for that position. Thought he might have an opportunity at the very minimum to make the practice squad. Now that's completely out the window as a guy who has done everything right just picks up injury after injury. This guy has broken his leg. He had fractured a vertebra in his neck, blew his out of his ACL, but when he was healthy, he was nearly unstoppable. I mean, against a ranked TCU team, a top 10 TCU team, the man had over 100 yards rushing and 100 yards receiving, 151 on the ground, 139 through the air. He's also was really just a nice guy, but more than that, when he had a football in his hand, he was he was that. He was just it. I mean, we're talking about a guy that was the only real bright spot in the 2018 Rose Bowl against Georgia, perhaps the best defense in college football that year. And all Rodney Anderson did was carry the ball 26 times for 201 yards against Roquan Smith in the game. Like, he would, they wanted nothing of him. And he did it again uh, earlier in that year against Kansas State. Lincoln Riley had a rare bad play call where he just called it run uh, a run play for Rodney Anderson to the part of the field where Kansas State was stacked up. And not only did he turn a loss and probable into the game and particularly the season into a big game, he took it all the way to the house and he scored. And if he doesn't score, Oklahoma does not get an opportunity to play for a college football playoff. Might not even make the Big 12 championship game that year. So everybody was really excited to see what he could do in 2018. Kyler Murray was going to be the quarterback, and you had Hollywood Brown on one side, you had CeeDee Lamb on the other. Grant Calcaterra at Y didn't see that Lee Morris was going to emerge like he did. And Rodney Anderson was tearing people up. I mean, he went against Florida Atlantic, they didn't want any piece of him. And then against UCLA, blows out his ACL. Done for the year. And we'd all lamented it then because it felt like the offense was going to be built around him in much the same way that the offense is built around Travis Etienne at Clemson. We were going to let him set the pace, and everybody else is just going to keep pace. And as he went, so did the team. So Kyler Murray needed to do Kyler Murray stuff in that season. And I contend that if Rodney Anderson is healthy, Kyler Murray never wins a Heisman Trophy and probably isn't the number one overall draft pick because he had to make up for the lost production of Rodney Anderson. And now we're left wondering what might have been with Rodney Anderson. I, I, I think he might be done. I, I just don't see a way back unless he really, really, really wants it. And if he really, really, really wants it, go get it. But my buddy Robert had the foresight to be like, even yesterday, can we not talk about that lazy title for Marcus Dupree that was the best that never was and hand that to Rodney Anderson because we only got to see him in flashes. You know, he only became the bell cow back, you know, toward the latter half of that 2017 season. I mean, we only got eight, ten games out of him, really. And we never really got to see what he got to do in the NFL. I mean, he didn't carry the ball in the first couple of games for the Bengals. Didn't even know if he was going to get a shot. And when he got a shot, he looked good. So Robert hears the news, and he, and he backs up off of the March Dupree, even though I think he still wants to give that title to him. And now he's just into, that's your Mike Gaddis, RJ. That's your guy. That's the guy you got to see flash in college, the guy that you swear up and down would have done great things in the NFL and just never got an opportunity to do it because knees just couldn't hold up. The entirety of Sooner Nation is in tears for Rodney Anderson and wish him nothing but the best. I know this. I've, I've got, man, probably t over 20 text messages about it. You know, people all over Twitter 
in the comments of Facebook before this video even loaded, or Facebook, uh, in the comments of YouTube. I don't know why I have Facebook on the brain. It might be because I'm still traumatized by that death chart dropped on Facebook Live. Point is, people care. And if this makes it back to you, Rodney, you need to know that. People care. And people are going to pull for you and whatever it is you decide to do. If you decide to try to get back into the NFL and give it a go, people are going to pull for you. If you try to coach, people are going to pull for you. Dude, if you want to be an investment banker, people are going to pull for you. I think that part of it is always difficult to get across because you don't really know many people like that. You know who you know. You know your family. You know the people that love you. You know the people that you love. And it's difficult to really internalize what hundreds of thousands of people feel for you at a moment when they know that you are in great pain and you don't know what the future holds. But I think you'll find throughout the rest of your life, there will be people around who want to help you because you gave them just a moment of joy, a moment of pleasure, a moment of glee. when we got to see you with a football in your hands at the University of Oklahoma. All right, that's it for me. Yes.